For all your reclaimed pine and hardwoods, call David at Reclaimed Timber Liverpool or check out his Facebook page, Reclaimed Timber Liverpool. Also delivery available within 50 mile radius of Bickerstaff. So call David on 07 341 773 555. That's David at 07 341 773 555. Hello, thank you for joining me today. What we're going to be doing today is talking about scroll sawing. Now, I'm no expert in this field. Um, I'm pretty advanced in what I do, but I am not an expert by any means. There is a lot of more experienced people out there than what I can tell you, but I just want to pass on a bit of knowledge, what I, the way I do things and the way I get by in doing them. Uh, I've never had any failures in the way I do it so if I can teach somebody something then that's a bonus but what we're going to talk about today is how to put the stencils onto the wood um, what sorts of wood you can use uh, how to fix the stencils to the pieces of wood and just a bit of basic setup on your machine uh, this is just one thing I'm gonna to starting off with you don't want to be doing very detailed designs pick something simple something with big inside cuts and straight lines and curves get yourself a piece of paper or a piece of scrap wood and just draw some straight lines on it and just keep learn following them lines learn how the machine works if you've got an adjustable speed machine try it at different speeds at a speed you're comfortable with doing it yourself don't try and rush it don't try and push the wood through the machine too quickly because you'll snap the blades you'll do damage to the machine there's also two different sets of blades there's pinned blades which are blades like that which have got pins on the end now the blades are a lot thicker so if you do get a bit more advanced in your scroll sawing and you start doing inside cuts you will find that the holes what you have to drill these blades will not fit through them holes so you're going to want to go to a pinless blade now that blade is roughly a millimetre thick and probably three millimeters in diameter so you need a hole to get the the pins through the hole these are pinless blades and as you can see they're very very thin they're probably a millimeter this is a five reverse tooth blade which means there's five teeth per inch and then at the bottom of the blade there's teeth facing the opposite way so that when the the saw is cutting up and downwards you get a clean cut on the underside of the wood what you're cutting whereas using normal blades you get a rougher cut on the underneath of the piece of wood you're cutting so that's the blade side of things but most machines what you buy whether it be a cheap one or expensive one should run both sets of blades I know I understand some machines won't run pinless blades, they will only run pin blades. These are like a hacksaw blade. To run pinless blades on some machines, you will need some of these. Which allow you to fit pinless blades to your machine. To fit the pinless blades, there's a small hole and two grub screws on either side which hold the blade in place if you look in the middle of the hole you want the blade right in the middle of that hole so you need to adjust the grub screws into a position where they will just be in the middle enough to get your blade through and hold it in place and also the blade if you look at the teeth on the blade have to be pointing downwards when you fit it into the machine 
because they cut on the downstroke, not on the upstroke. So, what I've done for the purpose of this video is I just printed a little sign off saying maker like so now all I'm going to do at the bottom of there is just draw a box on the bottom so the letters will actually sit on the box and the, the maker sign will sit on a worktop or a shelf or wherever you want to put it so I'm going to go through putting that onto a piece of wood in a minute but I'm just going to talk about the wood now you're better off starting off with some MDF if you're using MDF please use a mask this stuff is toxic it's dangerous to your lungs the dust what comes off it please use a mask as you can see MDF it's very smooth on both sides so this stuff doesn't need any preparation to be able to put a design on it you can just put the design straight on this MDF is fine no preparation Whereas you get things like just let me find the piece you get a piece of pine wood this has been for a planer but it still needs sanding so you'd have to sand that beforehand to give you a good finish and then you don't have to mess about with it once you've put your design and cut it out you might have to do a little bit of edge sanding around the letters or the design whatever you're doing but if your blades are good then nine times out of ten you don't need to do any sanding on your work when it's done just a very light bit on the back where the blades just fluffed it up a bit on the back but that's your pine wood I would advance onto that after doing MDF because you can put stains and finishes on, uh, on pine wood whereas MDF you're limited to what finishes you can put on it because the wood swells once it gets wet it's just like a sponge then you move on to things like pieces of hardwood these are a lot harder to cut there's a bit more skill involved in cutting pieces of hardwood obviously because it's a very hard wood and you soon dull the blades uh, if you don't know what you're doing so I'd stay away from hardwoods until you're pretty advanced and you can control the saw the way you want to control it yeah that's the basic do's and don'ts of uh, the pieces of wood and what have you uh, like I say I'm no expert in this I just want to pass on something that I've learned and I've picked up um, I'm going to talk about how to put the designs onto the pieces of wood now this is just my preferred method of doing it uh, you can buy stuff like this which is spray adhesive, I, don't, I know quite a few people do like using this I don't, personally I don't like the stuff um, the way I like to do it, it's a bit more long winded yeah but I get myself a roll of painters tape I get some clear cellar tape or clear packing tape depending on where you're from and I get a cheap uh, glue stick I've tried the Yoohoo ones and I don't like the Yoohoo ones these are just cheap glue sticks from a local pound shop or dollar store if you're in America uh, I get five of these for a pound compared to the Yoohoo ones which are more expensive I think they're like a pound each for one of these and they will last you a while but uh, like I said the pinless blades you can buy you can get them in packs like this there's a pack of 10 there, I think that was like £2.50 or something like that, they're not very expensive and the place where I get pinless blades from you can get 10 pinless blades, I think they're £2.70 uh, I know which I'd rather spend my money on, I'd rather get the, the pinless blades um, and these are excellent blades, the ones I use I haven't tried Pegasus blades and things like that, I've never, never tried them but these blades cut just as well in my opinion um, to what I've seen others working so I'm going to put the design on the piece of wood now 
Right, so as you can see, I've got the design now. You can do all these designs on a program called Inkscape. Uh, there is other programs you can use, but I like using Inkscape. There's a lot of different fonts on there. And there's actually ones on there for making signs in the font section. So, but I've just made this one up. I thought it was easier to just show you on it. There's straight lines, there's little tiny curves, and you can go on from there. So all I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to go a centimetre past on either side. And I'm going to go straight line all the way across. And then I'm just going to do a centimetre box. All the way across. And then all those letters will sit on that box and then you'll be able to put that on a shelf or on a worktop or anywhere you want to put it. Right, so I've got my design. What do we do now? I've got my piece of wood. As you can see it's nice and smooth and it's got a flat edge on it. So I'm going to get the design but first of all, I'm going to get your masking tape, or your painter's tape. And I'm going to lay it on the piece of wood. Like so. Make sure there's no bubbles in it, no air bubbles. Make sure it's nice and flat. Try not to have it so it's folded underneath, because it'll put a, a ridge underneath your, your work on the when you're running it across the table on the scroll saw. Right, so as you can see I've gone that way, so the sign's going to go on there, yeah? So then what I do is just get a scrap of wood, get your glue stick, and make sure you go over it completely on the back of it. Make sure it's saturated with glue on the back. So you get a good stick to the, the tape because you don't want this design coming off if it was an important piece when you're halfway through it. Make sure you get it all around the edges and all the way across. And then just line it up with that bottom edge right on the bottom of your, your piece of wood because you know that that edge is perfectly 90 degrees square. So obviously if you're sitting it on something, just press it down, make sure you get all the air out right from underneath it. Now you're going to get your sellotape. You put your sellotape on it to help keep, keep the blade lubricated and to keep the blade cool. It's something to do with the glue, what's on the, the tape, what helps keep it cool. Now when I'm putting my tape on it, I put my design on that way, I like to put the sellotape on that way. The same again, try not to get it folded underneath. Make sure it's nice and flat. Now 
and then completely cover your design with the sellotape. Like so. Now you're going to ask yourself, I've got inside cuts, am I going to deal with those? Get yourself a small drill, small drill bit, 1.5mm, and get yourself a drill. Now the inside cuts on this are on here here, these two, and in the M. So all I'm going to do is drill a small hole in the middle away from the design itself so that when I start cutting I'm not going to cut straight into the, the lettering. Make sure you always put a back of board underneath what you're drilling through and then you don't get a blowout on the back of your work. Right, so you've drilled all your little holes, turn it over and just get a little bit of sandpaper and just rub the back of it flat where your holes have come through. That way then you won't get any snags on your, on your bed of your saw. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the saw itself. Man's a variable speed saw, so you can have it on really slow, or you can have it on really fast. Starting off you want it on as slow a speed as you can manage. The workpiece will rackle and bounce about when you first start and you don't know what you're doing. As you can see I've taken the guard off my machine. There's a little foot. There's a little foot what holds the workpiece down. I find it easier to work without that little work, that uh, foot on. So now we're going to check the blade. Don't always go off the manufacturer's settings on the adjustments for your table. So, as you can see, the table will tilt one way. Get yourself a protractor got a 90 degree mark on it in the middle. Put it on your table and line your blade up the best you can with that 90 degree mark. It is a little bit fiddly to do. If you know you're cutting at 90 degrees, once you've cut through the design, the piece of work should just fall straight through. If it doesn't fall through, 
then you know your work is being cut on a slight taper and it will only come out through the top, it won't come out through the bottom. This way, if you set it to 90 degrees with this, as you can see, you've got your 90 degree, there's a black line. If you line your blade up with that mark on the back of the blade, your work shouldn't be far out. Just look at the settings. See if I look at the settings on, on my machine now to where I've set it, it's just past zero which is 90 so it's about 92 degrees on the settings on the machine itself whereas I've just set it to 90 degrees. So that's just another little tip for you. Just line it up on the table and line it up on the back of the blade until that black line on your protractor disappears with that. You know when you, you obviously you can see it better yourself. So just tighten it up, put your dust extraction into it, and then we're going to talk about uh, blade tension now. I'm going to slacken my tension right off, and as you can see, the blades like a piece of string now. There's a lot of movement in it. I'll just try and zoom it in a bit so you can see. That's about the best angle. As you can see the blade will move probably a centimetre either side because that's slackened to the slackest it'll go now. So I'm just going to tension the blade with the knob or the lever at the back of the machine. Just tighten it. Just keep giving it a... Now that, you can just barely push it, probably two millimetres, maybe a millimetre off centre. That's how I like to have the blade. And as you can listen to the tone, I don't know what note that is in musical notes but that's the note you're looking for. Probably could go slightly quarter of a turn tighter to get a higher pitch. Well that's round about where you want your machine set. So now we're going to go back to the wood. Do all your inside cuts first. Make sure that you do all your inside work first before you start cutting around the outside. Because I've found before if you cut around the outside and you go to cut something on the inside, a piece of work it could snap off or it could break off. So if you do all your inside cuts first and then round the outsides. So I'm just gonna set it up now. I'm gonna feed the slacken the tension off and feed the blade through this little hole. See this is where I was saying about before when you've got the pin blades. I can't find where I've put it now. See that little hole? You've not got a lot of room in between that design from the black part to the black part there. So if you're going to have to drill a hole to fit that in there, it's going to affect the lettering. So you'd have to drill a pretty big hole to get that in there. So this is why it's easier to use pinless blades. So I'm just going to slacken the tension off. Feed it through the hole on the back of the work. It is a bit fiddly. Set your tension again. You'll know as you get more experienced where your tension has got to be each time without listening to it. So I'm just going to set my machine on a slow speed. I'm going to make my first cut. Just try 
try and follow the black line all the way down to the bottom. Just before you get to the bottom, stop and just take your saw, just take the blade and nibble away enough so you can turn the saw and turn the workpiece like so and then just go to your next corner and the same again just nibble the wood away a little bit So you can turn the work like so. And then just go up to the top. As you can see though, I'm cutting a straight line. But the work, the piece of wood is on an angle. Because the, the saw won't cut a straight line. You have to cut the line to the to the blade itself. going to take it to with a millimetre at the top and then I'm going to nibble away again which is giving me enough room to be able to turn the saw blade in the wood like so and same again just go to the nibble away enough to get you your saw so it'll turn like that and then bring it back down to this point and meet up with your entry hole As I was saying, that should fall through the back if you've got your blade set up right. Like so, as you can see it's very thin, and that's your first inside cut. I'm going to do all the inside now, and I'm going to go around the outside.
Right. So now you've made all the inside cuts. You've understood how to do the inside cuts. Same thing, you're just going round the outside. You're following the outside of the letter. The way I try and do it is you've got your black line. I either cut it just proud of the black line or follow the black line. It's entirely up to you how you cut it. Uh, nobody's going to know because once that pattern comes off, it's all going to look the same. Once that picture comes off, it doesn't matter if you do it slightly bigger or you do it onto the line. I try and cut the line in half if you know what I mean. Uh, it's not in the black and it's not in the white, it's right in the middle of the line. Um, that's the way I like to do, do mine. But it's a challenge for you. Uh, there's a Mother's Day coming up I think if you're a scroll sawyer. Make your mother something if, you, if your parents are still with you or make a loved one, a family member. Just make them a little sign if you're just starting out. They'll be grateful of it. Anything what you make for a family member, they're always grateful for it. Um, it's better than something where you go in a shop and buy anywhere. That's the way I look at it. If someone makes you something, it's uh, it's priceless. But I'm going to crack on now. I'm going to cut the outside of it off. There you go, that's all the cutting out done. Now if you've got your blade set right like I said, it should just slide out and then slide back in. But it should slide forwards, in and out, like so. Whereas if your blade isn't set right, it'll only slide out one way because it'll be on a taper. Well there you go. Be proud of yourself, you just made your first scroll saw sign. Like so. That's it, it's finished. And if you get your saw set right on the back, you'll just have a very fine bit of fluff on the back which just needs a little bit of sandpaper once over and done as you can see all around the lettering nice and smooth nice and clean there's no saw marks in it because you're not forcing the wood you're not trying to rush the blade nice and sharp nice and clean Take your time, 
let the saw do the work. That's one thing you've got to remember. Let the saw do the work. But, uh, I'm going to take this design off now. That's too... I've not looked at a clock but it's probably too 30 minutes. That's putting the design on and cutting it out. That was for me doing it. Well, as you can see, because you're using sellotape or packing tape or whatever you want to call it, it just comes off easy. Just a little bit of peeling comes off. And then where you've put the uh, masking tape as your first layer, that'll just peel off. And then there's no glue residue to get off. But there's loads and loads of designs on uh, Google what you can find. If you want to do a, uh, a few more advanced things, check out the Steve Good website. Uh, the link's in the description for the site down below. There's lettering on there, there's boxes on there, there's all sorts of things. There's over a thousand designs, probably two thousand designs on there. Uh, that's where I get quite a few of mine from. But for just starting off and learning, just get yourself some scraps of wood. Draw some lines, draw some curves. Um, if you've got a design and it's got a small circle in it, just use a drill. Don't be tempted to try and cut it with your saw, you, if it's like 2, 3 or 4 mil thick hole just use a drill bit, just drill it out and then you don't have to worry about trying to follow it around with a saw blade but there you go the design's coming off with the uh, masking tape now so you can just peel it straight off and like I say if you had uh, pre-sanded wood beforehand you don't even have to sand it down now, you can just put your finish on it and that's the finished sign now and so if it, if it was uh, you could spray it don't go too heavy on the spray because it's only MDF so it will absorb it and it'll swell the wood um, or you could just leave it natural but, uh, have a go at do your name, go on uh, I use Inkscape and I design, use, do my designs on there, my names, my letters uh, just find the basic block lettering and just have a go at doing your name, have a go at doing your partner's name, or your, your son's, your daughter's name, just do anything, a dog's name, uh, just practice, 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 and just go from there, and once you start getting confident that you can do the curves, and you're doing the corners, and you're going into the corners and cutting around in shapes, try a, a design with a lot of inside the, the cuts on it, into tight corners, into diamond shapes and uh, those sort of designs if you've seen any of our previous uh, scroll sawing videos where they go into a tight point take the saw into it nibble away and then come back out of it and then reverse your saw into it um, like I said there's a lot more advanced videos out there but this is just for the beginner uh, and that's all I can say really um, like I said my scroll saw is a Clark woodworker it's a variable speed and I think it was 70 quid you can buy them from Aldi I think 70 or 80 quid um, there's machine mark this is where I got mine from 77 quid I think it was or 76 something around that mark uh, there's the record power ones, 
they're slightly more expensive but they're basically all the same machine, they're just a different brand and a different colour. The record power is exactly the same looking as my machine but it's made by record power. Um, there's a Einhell I think they're called, that's how you say them. It looks exactly the same as mine. The Aldi one looks exactly the same as mine, the Aldi work zone. The Shepatch one looks the same as mine. They're all exactly the same, they work the same, the blades go up and down, they've got a speed control on them. That's all I can say. Um, if you like the video and you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, please leave me a comment down below. I'll try and answer all the questions what uh, you ask me. I do answer all my comments back and go through all the comments. I might not get back to them straight away, but I do get back to you. Uh, if you like this video, please smash that like button. If you don't, then give me a thumbs down and leave me a reason why. Uh, I've tried to be as thorough as I can. I ain't no teacher. Uh, I'm still a student myself in the world of scroll sawing and woodworking but I've done enough to think that I can pass something on to somebody else so except I'll see you again soon thank you for watching and I hope you can pick something up from this